Hi, how you doing today? Thanks so much for being here. I'm instructor Dwayne Jenkins. Thanks for being here at Dwayne's Guitar Lessons. We're learning all kinds of aspects about playing guitar, getting better. And in today's lesson, what we're going to be talking about is this bad boy right here, the fretboard. Okay, the notes, some basics of music theory. How do we figure out the notes on this thing? Okay, how do we no figure out the notes to create our chords and our scales, you know, things like that. That's what we want to learn, okay? So today's lesson is going to learn on some basic music theory for beginners, kind of get you started in the direction of how to read this bad boy right here, the fretboard. Okay, let's take a look. All right, so now here we go with our music theory basics, okay? Now music theory starts with our 12 notes, okay? 12 notes of the, of the musical alphabet. We have A, A sharp B, or B flat, B, C, C sharp or D flat, D, D sharp or E flat, E, F, F sharp or G flat, G, G sharp or A flat. Uh, yes, and then it's gonna go back to A. There's no H, I, J or anything like that. So you just gotta think, 12 notes, that's it, just 12, okay? Now I've numbered them here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, okay? Now the reason why a couple of these, like the 2, the 5, the 7, the 10, and the 12, have two notes is because they're called accidentals. And what they are is they're notes in between these two here like this. So, and depending on which way you're going, um, up the scale. So if you're going up the scale, it's going to be a sharp. If you're going down the scale, it's going to be a flat. So for instance, if you were going this way, you would go A, A sharp, B, C. But if you were going this way, you would go C, B, B flat, A. And A sharp and a B flat are the same thing. C sharp and D flat are the same thing. D sharp and E flat are the same thing. F sharp and G flat are the same thing. It just depends on the direction that you're going in the scale, okay? Now on your guitar, sharp is up the scale, which is towards the bridge, okay? So if you look at your guitar fretboard, you wanna start at the nut, go up towards the bridge, that's sharp, okay? If you're going, if flat would be going down the scale from say the bridge or the 24th fret, 22nd fret, whatever, however long your fretboard is, down to the first fret, that would be down, okay? That would be flat, okay? So you just, it's just a matter of what direction you're moving. If you're moving up the fretboard, it's going to be considered a sharp. If you're moving down the fretboard, it's going to be considered a flat, okay? Now, what I like to do is think of these notes as the roots of a tree, okay? So let's say music was like a tree, all right? And these 12 notes would be the roots, like right here. A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp. Like 12 roots to the tree, and then the tree goes up, and that tree trunk would be our major scale, which everything derives from the major scale, so that's eight notes taken out of these 12 notes, and then everything branches out from that. All your other chords and your scales branch out from the major scale, and that's why you learn the major scale. That's that do, re, mi that you learn when you're a child in school. And of course, not everybody learns that because they don't do music in school anymore, but nonetheless, you understand what I'm talking about. So if you hear the do, re, mi, that's what it means. It's the major scale, and everything comes from that. But the major scale is eight notes that come from here, these 12 notes, which is the chromatic scale, okay? Musical alphabet or the chromatic scale. So you start with the chromatic scale, which is 12 notes, you take eight notes out of that to create the major scale, and then out of the major scale, you create everything else. The minor scales, your diminished, all your different chord shapes and everything else, okay? Now, if you visualize in patterns, it makes for easier learning, okay? Now right here, I've written out a diagram of the guitar fretboard. And we have our, our strings, our six strings, E, A, D, G, B, E. Now, when you're looking at sheet music, your lowest note is always going to be on the bottom. So you're, it's kind of like your guitar is upside down. So if you can kind of just visualize that. So your lowest string, the top one, is going to be here on the bottom. So that's going to be your E string, and then your A string, D string, G string, B string, E string. Okay? Now, like up here, if we started with, say, our A, our A string, okay, it's our fifth string, the A. We play that open, that's gonna be an A note. And then the next fret would be an A sharp, 
next one's going to be a B, next one a C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, etc. Just like up here, okay? Now let's say we started on the G string though. While this G string, the note would be open. If we play that string open, that's a G note. So then our next fret is going to be the next note in the alphabet. Up here, we look up here, it's a G sharp. So it'd be a G sharp. Then it goes to A, so it goes back to A up here. A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, etc. Okay, E, F, G, and so forth. All right. Now let's say we start with an E, the E string. Okay, right here. We play that string open, that's an E note. Then our first fret's going to be then F, because that's what it tells us up here. The next note in the musical alphabet is F, so we go to F. And the next note is an F sharp, so we go to F sharp. Then a G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, etc. Just like up here, okay? And what's great about this is that this stuff always stays in the same order. It doesn't ever change. So if you start, let's say we did the B. We play that string open, that's a B note. Then our next note would be whatever is up here in the alphabet. Well, it would be a C. So that means that this fret right here would be a C. And then the next fret would be according to this, a C sharp, so that'd be here, and then the next one would be a D, and then a D sharp, E, F, so forth and so forth, okay? So what's great about it is if you just learn this alphabet, it always stays in that same order, okay? And, it's, uh, it's, and this alphabet is on each one of your six strings, okay? So you kind of got this alphabet six times on your guitar, okay? And it starts in different positions because of the strings have different names. So your sixth string is going to start on the E, your fifth string is going to start here at the A, fourth string is going to start here at the D, third string is going to start here at the G, second string is going to start here at the B, and of course your first string is again going to start here at the E, but it's always going to be in that same order. So once you get this order down, you got it. You got, you know, you can do it all, all over the fretboard, okay? And if we look at this, remember I mentioned to you visualizing patterns for easier learning? If we look at this, there's an A sharp here. We come down at an angle, there's an A sharp there. We come up at an angle, there's an A sharp there. We could just make like a line, boom, okay? Same thing with all the other notes. B, we come here at an angle, there's a B there. Come up an angle, there's a B there. Same thing with the C. C, an angled here, an angled there. See, it's in patterns. The way that the notes reside on the guitar fretboard is kind of can be made out in patterns and it's very specific and it's a, actually a really great way of learning if you just visualize the patterns okay but you got to learn your notes you got to learn the names of your strings so you know where to start and then just proceed up the fretboard or down the fretboard doesn't really matter but if you proceed up the fretboard and you follow this diagram, you're gonna know every single note on every single string. It's not even gonna be really a mystery because of the fact that it's always gonna go in this order no matter where you're starting, whether you're starting on D, whether you're starting on G, whether you're starting on C, it doesn't matter. You could start right here at the fifth fret, third string, which is a C note, and to say, what's the next one? Well, it's C sharp, and then D, D sharp, E, F, and so forth and so forth. It's always gonna be in that order. So if you just get these 12 frets down, get them in order here, they're always gonna be in that same order, and you'll be able to master the fretboard. All right? All right, so there we have it. Our musical alphabet, everything starts with that, okay? That's like the foundation, it's like building a house. The first thing you start with is the foundation and everything is built on top of that. So the foundation of music is those 12 notes, okay? The chromatic scale. And like I said, if you look at music as like a tree, the chromatic scale is the roots. That's what holds the tree up, is the roots, okay? And the musical tree has 12 roots and it's the chromatic scale, what I showed you. And then from that you take eight notes and create the major scale which is the tree we'll just consider that to be the tree trunk okay 
and then everything branches out from there you know all your chords your major chords your minor chords all your scales everything comes out of the major scale and that's why they teach that to begin with when you learn music that do re mi uh, you know some of you people might have learned it you might not have but I remember when I was a kid I took music in school and they taught us the do re mi and that's the major scale and the reason why because that's kind of like the tree trunk that everything branches out from okay but it's the chromatic scale that everything starts from that musical alphabet and the musical alphabet kind of to a musician is what the regular alphabet is to like a a novelist you know those are the regular alphabet those 26 letters is what a novelist uses to write his words his book and a music musician like us is what we use these 12 notes to create our music our chords our scales all the things that we do with that stuff so when it comes to learning the basics of music theory start with your chromatic scale master those 12 notes okay and master them on your fretboard all right it's not, it's not really that difficult if you look at each string you got to know the names of your strings you know if you play by air and you say I don't know the names of my strings learn the names of your strings okay learn that and then learn the notes if you're starting with E here on the sixth string it's going to be E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, you know, and so forth. And then same thing with the next one, A and D, and it's always in the same order every single time. I guarantee it. And once you kind of get down the concept, it'll make it a lot easier. And this is what you're going to need to do to be able to build chords, okay? So if you play rhythm, you do songwriting, you want to figure out how to build chords, this is the stuff that you need to know. This music theory, the musical alphabet, and everything like that, okay? And if you're interested in, in you know, knowing more about this stuff, you can check out my book, Rhythm Guitar Alchemy. It teaches you, I have a chapter in here on chord embellishments. They teach you all about this stuff, about the chromatic scale and the major scale and how you use it to build your chords, okay? And so if you want to check that out, you can check that out. I have it on Amazon or my eBay store along with my other books that I'm writing. So work with that and I guarantee that's going to really help you improve your guitar playing and unlock the mysteries of the fretboard. Okay, so thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Hit the bell for future notifications and all that good stuff. Check out my website because I have some more stuff on there about it on my blog. Got a lot of great video lessons on there and uh, blog lessons and stuff to teach you even more in depth about a little bit more about what I'm teaching you here okay so if you have any questions feel free to let me know and until our next lesson keep practicing and I'll see you then